The question you have to ask is, why should a company pay for this? I mean, if I got to pay you more because you're good looking, you know, I'm going to be hurt compared to my competitors who can sell the same product produced by ugly workers. So the question you have to ask is, how can a company survive doing this in a competitive world? The answer is, they can charge more for their product. Okay? Very simple. Uh, one of our papers showed, it was a rather strange sample, it was Dutch advertising companies, that those companies that had better looking executives, same location, same size, had better sales and not small. The effect of the looks of the executives on the company's sales was really huge, probably much more, in fact, than it cost them to pay the better looking executives. So in a sense, the reason companies can do this and survive is they sell more. In fact, much, much more. There's even a very neat thing in that study where I actually won, I think, the equivalent of about $3 from my co-author uh, when we were working on this. So imagine two companies, each of which has two executives on a five-to-one scale. One company has two executives who are average. The other company has one who's gorgeous and one who is really ugly. The question is, which company will do better, the one with the two average execs or the one with the ugly and gorgeous exec? The gorgeous and ugly exec for a simple reason. You put the gorgeous exec out there doing what she does well, bringing in customers. You put the ugly exec in the back room doing whatever work that they can do, and you're better off than having two identical people. And this, in fact, illustrates one of the classic ideas in economics, the so-called principle of comparative advantage. You do better if you have relative differences among your employers or the th employees or the things you do. Indeed, of all the things in the beauty stuff I've worked on and read about over the last 20 years, I think one of the neatest things is how almost half of what we do in economics is mirrored in the various ways in which beauty affects our behavior. Uh, comparative advantage, employment, wages, all the concepts that I teach in my Intro Econ class, I could teach them through the example of beauty. In that sense, then, it's a very nice way to learn about economics. And I think somebody reading this little book could learn a heck of a lot of economics with no jargon, no graphs, and two little tables, which for an economist ain't easy to do, believe me.